the Yucatan, deep in the Mexican jungle with the remains and ruins in the former area of the ancient Maya civilization, we find mysterious and largely unknown underwater cave systems. On the Yucatan exist almost no surface rivers because rain pours directly through the sandstone accumulating in these caves. Sometimes the ceiling collapses and pond-like entrance areas origin. The Maya named these openings cenotes, a word that origins from the Mayan word cenot and means sacred spring. Scientifically, they are called anchorline cave systems, which refers to their connection to the sea and saltwater sections in the deeper cave levels. The surface area, however, represents the reservoir for fresh water. For the Maya, cenotes were not only pure water sources, but also often sacred gates to their hidden underworld. And indeed, diving in these cave systems is quite a spiritual experience, and yes, also for a scientist. In these cenotes live species that are especially adapted to a life in darkness, scientifically called stugobionts. We find here also specimens of one crustacean group, the Remipedia. Crustacean evolution is still unclear, but these centipede-like looking crustaceans were only recently discovered in 1981 and even more enigmatic. The first phylogenomic study on crustaceans, including molecular data from Remipedia, suggests that they are likely the closest relatives to insects, a finding that is supported by older morphological hypotheses and newer, respectively neuroanatomical studies. Consequently, Remipedia seem directly linked to the also unclear origin of hexapods or insects and their conquering of terrestrial habitat. However, this time we collected individuals to study their possible venom, because remipedes previously were suggested to be venomous. Their mouse parts are indeed characteristic for predators and they possess a pair of venom glands which are connected via a venom ductus to a venom reservoir in the terminal end of their maxillus, which are used to catch prey and also to inject the venom. To investigate the possible venomousness, we applied a two-fold approach by using morphological and molecular state-of-the-art methods. A microcomputer tomography of the Remipede's head part at the German Synchroton in Hamburg delivered highly precise three-dimensional reconstructions of its venom delivery system. The venom gland, venom ductus and venom reservoir are colored in pink. The complex muscle system displayed here in orange clearly facilitates the injection of the venom into prey. Analyzing the expressed proteins in their venom glands by transcriptome sequencing, we find a very unique venom composition. One toxin is known from spider venoms and acts probably as a paralyzing neurotoxin component. The remaining components are proteinases that are likely involved to disrupt chitinase structures and to marginate the tissue of the prey. The agatoxin-like protein is also found in a different form and structure, also in non-venomous species and body tissue of remipedes. The phylogenetic tree of this protein indicates the highly converged evolution of venom proteins and the importance to cover venom gland but also non-venom gland tissue and non-venomous taxa to infer evolution of venom proteins. Here we dive through the halocline, the mixture zone of the lower saltwater section and the upper freshwater column on top. It's always a blurry, sometimes intense feeling. Depending on the cave's topology, you may dive for several minutes through the halocline. It's an experience of low visibility and you have to stay at the guideline. All cave divers use this guideline to prevent loss of orientation in the caves. 
and sometimes cool helmets to protect the head and to mount additional lights. Scientists fancy them especially because the hands are free to collect species or to take footage. However, you will always experience low or no visibility situations like here in the entrance area of this particular cave. The organic material dropping into the cenote rottens and the sulfate forms hydrogen sulfate clouds in the water. Well, and here ends our short trip to the hidden underworld of the Yucatan. I hope that I could reflect some of the fascination I experience every time when I dive in these caves and finally interpret the scientific results of the expeditions. I would like to thank the funding parties which enabled me to dive in those remote areas and of course those people who made the expeditions successful. Thanks for the tough cave diving training, Budu and Toddy, you'll burn me. And I'm still sure that I heard the jaguar roaring one night.